Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Williams, and I'm here to talk to you about predators. And that means animals that eat other animals. What do you think about when you think about predators? Maybe big teeth, sharp claws, really strong, something like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But of course, Tyrannosaurus is not the only kind of predator. And as you know, Tyrannosaurus is extinct, but there's still a lot of predators and a lot of predators that still live in Hong Kong. And we have to think, what are you going to eat if you're a predator? You need an animal with some meat, maybe like a water buffalo. But a water buffalo is a big animal and can give you a lot of trouble with those horns if it charges at you. So how about try a cow? Cows are diff difficult as well. They're pretty big, a lot of beef, but it's still hard to catch and eat a cow. Wild boar, they're, they're wild pork, plenty of that in Hong Kong. But if you look at a wild animal and they don't like the idea of being eaten. <laughs> Hong Kong used to have an animal that could eat wild boar and cows and big animals like this. And that was the tiger, big and strong with powerful claws great teeth, really good eyesight, camouflage so it could hide in the jungle. But we cut down the jungles. There's only so little woodland left and we've only got a little cat called a leopard cat. Got spots like a leopard, but it's only about as big as a cat so you'd see in your house or in a friend's house. So that can't really eat anything very big, but it's a lovely animal. Leopard cats, like most of our mammals in Hong Kong, are very shy, hard to see them. Just like this mongoose. You'll get lucky, you might see a mongoose running along. They like to eat eggs, maybe some snakes and lizards and other small creatures. But if you want to see an easy predator in Hong Kong, look up. And you should see a black kite, perhaps over the harbour or over the city buildings. Black kites have got claws, they've got sharp beak, and they can eat fish in Hong Kong. And here's another bird, also called a bird of prey. This is smaller, called a goshawk. And, it's, and it hides in the forest. And when it flies, you'll see it's got short wings. These are so it can fly through the trees and catch birds in, inside the woodland and forests of Hong Kong. And can you think of any bird predators that come out at night? Yes, owls. We've got a few kinds of owls in Hong Kong. This is a brown fish owl, a really big owl. And it hunts, as you might have known from the name, fish. This one in Chung Chow Harbour. Warm summer evenings are the main time for our snakes to come out in Hong Kong. All snakes are predators, including the python, which you maybe know bites its prey and then coils around it and crushes it so it can't breathe and dies of asphyxiation. That's not the only way snakes kill things, of course. Not a very common way at all. More normal among some snakes is to have venom be really poisonous. Do you know what this one is? Yeah, a cobra. Much easier to tell when it's warning you that it's dangerous like this. And they can catch things when they're small, like a frog. And one of the commonest snakes in Hong Kong is this green one. Beautiful green bamboo snake. But you don't need to put your hand too close to it. If you look here, you can just see between the eye and the nose another pit. This is a pit viper, which means it can sense heat. So as soon as it senses something warm coming close to it, it can strike really fast and maybe catch an animal. And if you're not careful, it can bite you and give you a really painful venomous bite. It's not only snakes that have venom. This is a giant centipede. Here, this one's feeding on roadkill, something already dead but they can kill with long pincers that inject venom into their prey, maybe like cockroaches. Plus, of course, you'll know spiders have venom too. This 
is the biggest spider that you're likely to see in Hong Kong. Especially in late summer, you can find their web strung between the trees. Careful not to walk into one. This is a large woodland spider with legs almost the side of my hand span. And you see the yellow patterning there. Maybe that yellow and black pattern helps attract bees and wasps. They mistake this for being a flower and then fly in, bounce into the net, and then the spider can inject its venom, wrap them in some silk and devour it with its goopy saliva that will dissolve them from the inside. Another spider hunts like fishing, dangling down a piece of, a piece of thin thread. And here a bee's got stuck to it and this little spider's come down its web and is grabbing the bee, ready to eat. But you don't have to rush around when you're a predator. You don't always need venom. Sometimes you can just lie in wait, looking like a piece of scenery. This praying mantis with its green colour could look like leaves. It sits there with its legs outstretched. And then if something comes close, it can snatch it and then eat the prey. Look at the eyes on this, a dragonfly. Look how big they are. Really good for its eyesight, flying really fast, flying after small insects like mosquitoes and midges. And then it can catch them, maybe land like this one did, and munch them in its mouth. It's not only insects that fly. Here's a swallow swooping over people, and people who hardly see it here on Cheung Chow, but they're common breeding birds in parts of Hong Kong. Maybe you'll see them if you're out in this spring or summer. Here's an adult swallow that's perched, and this one, a youngster, almost ready to start flying for its, and feeding for itself. And come later in the summer, it will migrate south. Lots of other Hong Kong birds eat insects too. They're called insectivores. Do you see that really thin bill? That's typical of birds that are insectivores. This is a palace's warbler. It breeds in Russia, in forests, and it migrates to Hong Kong for the winter time to escape the winter cold. And here are Prinia. This one breeds in Hong Kong. It lives here all the year round. These insectivores include birds that feed mostly on the ground like pipits. Others prefer to perch on bushes and trees, maybe jump around on the ground, maybe even fly into the air, almost like swallows do, for a little, little bursts of flight and catch insects that way. Of course, when there's such a popular food, insects have different mechanisms for trying to stop being eaten, really. This one is called a tiger butterfly. Not because it's a predator like a tiger, but just because of the pattern. And this pattern says, don't eat me because I'm poisonous. I ate something really nasty as a caterpillar and you won't like my taste. And here's a bird with a different shaped bill. So it can eat small animals like lizards and others. Look, it looks a lot like a bird of prey, doesn't it? This one's called a shrike, but it's really a songbird, not, not related to the eagles so much. Shrikes might eat small frogs as well, but I think this one, a gunter's frog, is too big. Also, they jump very fast. So frogs eat insects and very small animals, but also they're popular prey. So they're a predator and they're prey. That's a bit of a dangerous way to live, huh? This changeable lizard also will be eaten by some, including birds of prey. They get quite long. They're one of the easiest reptiles to see in Hong Kong. They're quite inquisitive. Sometimes you look in spring and you might find one on top of a bush and you might find it's got a reddish head. That's why it's called a changeable lizard. This is the male in springtime, maybe looking out to show, show off to the ladies that he's looking handsome and maybe telling other males, don't come near me or we'll have a fight. And after they've bred, during the summertime, you get the young ones like this, really tiny. They must have to be very, very careful not to run into other predators. It looks like they need to grow bigger before they can become fast and able to escape. Look at this bird. What do you think it's going to eat? Here you are. You can see it now. Pulling out a big, juicy earthworm out of the ground. This is a Japanese night heron, very rare bird in Hong Kong. 
and it belongs to the family of herons. Here's a close relative, a Chinese pond heron, but it's not looking for worms. No, this one. Strike! Catches itself a really small fish. And here another bird on the seashore catches a small crab. These are among wetland birds, and wetlands, like my Po marshes, are very, very rich in animal life, so they really attract a lot of birds. A lot of the wildlife in these coastal mudflats is hidden below the surface. There are worms and shellfish and more. But you might look and find a lot of crabs on, on the top when the tide starts going down, like fiddler crabs and other species of crabs. Also, these weird little fish called mudskippers that can breathe air and wriggle around when the tide's gone down. So with all that food, you need to find a way of catching it. And for a bird like this one, a plover, it's got big eyes, a short bill, and it will run around and look for things on top of the, on top of the mud to eat. There's other birds, called other kinds of shorebirds with long bills and they can probe underneath the mud and touch something and they'll eat it then. I hope this reminds you of those herons from a few minutes ago. It's taller and slimmer and white all over. This is an egret, but look at that long bill, like a dagger. This is for catching fish. But of course, when a fish is caught, it's not very happy about it. You can see this one struggling away in the egret's bill. Eventually, this egret did manage to swallow the fish and gulp it down its long throat as probably a pretty good meal for the day. And here, much smaller than the egrets, but look, the same bill shape, a dagger also for catching fish. Do you know what this is called? I think you should do. This is a kingfisher, a small bird you can find at ponds and streams if you're lucky in parts of Hong Kong. Look at the bill shape on this bird. What does it remind you of? It's a spoon, isn't it? So this is called a spoon bill. It's bigger than the egrets, a la rather large bird in Hong Kong. And they have a special way of trying to catch fish and shrimps. They'll walk through the water like this with their heads down and the bill moving from side to side. The bill's got a sensitive tip, so when they come across maybe a shrimp that jumps out of the mud disturbed by the bill, they can snatch it, throw the head back, eat it, and then carry on going through the water. And this, the black-faced spoonbill, is one of the rarest birds in Hong Kong, one of the rarest birds in East Asia. Rare because wetlands like this are disappearing. We're destroying them for building projects and shrimp ponds and other things. This is one of the animals that are now extinct in Hong Kong. We used to have saltwater crocodiles like in Australia or other parts of Asia. But because of habitat destruction and probably hunting, they've become extinct here. Do you know what this is? That's right, it's a dolphin. But this is a Chinese white dolphin, a special species of Hong Kong. When adult, it's pink, and it's the world's pinkest dolphin as well. There's one other pink dolphin, lives in the Amazon. Probably, it's only got white skin, but we can see the blood through the skin. The young ones are grey, they turn pink when they're older. And they live in the Pearl River mouth near to Lantau. Maybe you've even been on a trip and seen them. So these dolphins will catch fish and squid and other animals in, in the murky waters there. They're very good at finding this, very agile. Sometimes they'll jump, but not very often. They're not big jumpers like other species. But sadly, they're becoming more and more uncommon, even very rare. Maybe they'll go extinct one day. Partly because of construction projects like building the airport. Probably pollution as well means there's less fish, more poison in the poor dolphin's blood. But still, we can be proud to still have this animal live in Hong Kong. And I hope you will get the chance to see them. It's one of the biggest and most attractive predators in all of Hong Kong. The dolphin was the last of the predators in this short video. So I hope you've enjoyed watching. Hope you've already learned a little bit. 
and I hope, really hope that you get to see some predators in the wild. Much better to see animals in the wild than just watching on TV or on videos. And if you have any questions, please let me know. So we'll see if I can answer them. Well, <laughs> or if you get me stumped, I'd have to go to Google. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see your questions later. Bye bye. <laughs>